Hi there, and welcome to Scout the Game Week. Scout the Game Week is Fantasy Football Scouts' weekly podcast, brought to you by the Scout Network. In each episode, we'll look back at the game week we have just played to assess what we can learn to help us in the next round of fixtures. I'm your host, Ryan, from Football Chatbox. Let's Scout the Game Week. We're back after uh, a small break, and this week I'm joined by FPL Kante. He's the co-host of the podcast FPL Under the Radar, alongside FPL Wrangler and Zidane's dad. You might have also seen some of the amazing charts being used on Twitter and also in various other videos on the FPL content space in YouTube. Um, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing all right. Doing all right. Long time no see. I Indeed. think we haven't done this for almost like a year now. But yes. yeah, uh, decent game week, poor season in general. But yeah, otherwise doing all right. Fair enough. Well, there's still time for to recap and get back to, I guess, what's, what's the target you're looking at this season? Well, I mean, general target is at least inside 100k uh, mm-hmm. and better if possible. And as you said, I mean, it's kind of the business end of the season, right? With all the doubles and blanks, that's where the engaged managers tend to do better. So yeah, hoping, hoping for better things. Yep, fair mm-hmm. enough. Same, same plan. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, but yeah, hoping for top 100k finish. And talking about business end of the season, let's get straight into it. Um, and let's start... Let's start off with Everton versus Spurs. Um, Richarlison ag- again with the points, but Spurs concede again, and it's another one point of a Poro. Um, with the blank coming in game week 26, would you think of selling both or potentially hold on to one of them or even both of them? Yeah, I mean, it really depends on the team. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, we have players from Spurs and Chelsea. Mm-hmm. And we'll buy players from Liverpool or some already own players from Liverpool. Those are the three big teams that play. And some may have loot on players, uh, uh, one or two here and there as well. So basically, you have to plan around that. Of course, we want to maximize the double game weeks. But at the same time, we want to make sure that we have enough players during the blank as well. If you can hold both Poro and Richa, that's great. Uh, One good thing about Spurs is that their fixtures after the blank is pretty decent. And also, they don't blank for sure. Uh, they are one of the four teams that for sure don't blank in game 29, right? So I think it's a fair, valid strategy to hold on to both of them if you can. Um, I, for uh, some reason, didn't buy Richard Lisson, right? Yeah. Because of the blank. Uh, uh, only because of that blank, essentially, right? But yeah, if uh, for people who already own him, I think it's a fair strategy to hold on to Richard Lisson. And for both of them, if you can. Yeah, fair enough. I've, I've got Poro. Um, I've got a few different like drafts of like moves mm-hmm. that I could do depending on who is available and not like if Salah is available, then it kind of changes the situation. Right. Um, right. If there's rumors about Soboslai being out, which means Trent could potentially move into midfield and Connor Bradley becoming an option. So there are a couple of different drafts floating around mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. based on that, Poro might leave, Poro might stay. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, more likely looking to keep Poro and like sell even Trent or Trippier, but we'll get to that a bit later. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, they don't blank in 29. Good fixtures. I wish I got on to Richardson as well, but it was like I was looking every time at that tra- game week 26 blank and kind of ignoring yeah. the f- fact that he had good yeah. fixtures before that and didn't go on to yeah. it. But it's a missed opportunity, but it's up. hopefully when it goes to gaming 29, I hope I don't make the same yeah. mistake where I don't ignore <laughs> the players who have good fixtures in yeah. that space as well. Um, sure. But yeah, so that's about uh, Spurs. Um, let's move into Newcastle versus Luton. Um, a 4-4 game, and it seems like Luton are going all-out attack um, in this one. And also, they've been going like full-on attack on like some of the other games as well. Now, there is uh, the fixture this week against Sheffield United for Luton. And then following that, they have the double and then another rumoured double game week in 28. We're not yet sure, but it's a rumour for the moment. Um, and then they most likely might have a fixture in game week 29. Depends on United yeah. versus Forest at the moment. Um, so yeah. if, you, if you were to get any Luton players, which one would you look at getting? Yeah, I think uh, it's kind of straightforward. The most obvious option, most accessible option is uh, Doty mm. for his price and for his uh, attacking potential. He's a defender, as you said, Luton is trading pretty aggressively, so we are not potentially buying Doty for clean sheets or anything. Sheffield is probably a clean sheet picture, but otherwise we are mostly buying him for uh, for his attacking potential, right? He's on pretty much all set pieces, or pretty much everything, right? 
uh, other than the penalty, of course. Uh, he's very involved. He's basically playing as the left winger. So, yeah, I think Dotty for his price, he is very uh, accessible uh, for most managers if you're looking for a defender, especially. Uh, then the second one, I think, again, because of team structure and everything else, it would be the goalkeeper, Kaminsky, right? Uh, as you mentioned, they potentially don't blank in 29. Uh, and they double potentially twice but from now to game you know, 28. So that's a, a great option to go to, uh, especially for people like me who has uh, Ariola and Dubravka. Uh, their pictures are okay, right? Just about okay. And neither defenses are like great either. Right? We are not we're seeing a lot of clean sheets from them anyways. So it's uh, basically rolling a couple of extra dices with the Kaminsky, right? So if you can go there, uh, even with maybe like a heat, it might be worth to get in, in early for Game Week 24. Game Week 28 double looks very, very likely right? from everything that we have seen. That seems very likely. And also very likely they don't mind so Kaminsky. And um, because of, again, team structure, because of all the forwards, good forwards and good midfielders that we have, it's hard to get in like an uh, Adebayo or Morris or even like a Barkley. But if you have any space, like uh, for some example, like if some people have like someone like Joao Pedro, you want to sell him, right? Uh, Adebayo or Morris, either of them is a uh, good buy for the upcoming game weeks. Morris is on penalties, Adebayo is not, but Adebayo is more kind of central, right? Playing yeah. more the number nine role. So either either of them could be a potentially good asset for people as well. Yeah, fair enough. And when you mentioned Kaminsky, um, I guess so. Both of us have the same keepers, and there's a high chance that mm -hmm. they potentially blank as well. In both of them, blank right. in twenty nine, so you'll be without right. a keeper as well. So, the probably a move that you're making pretty early, yeah. and I don't mind it for a hit. I haven't tested it now. The the I one thing is with this is both the keepers we have are very cheap, so we're trying to mm -hmm. we're kind of going up. So budget <laughs> might be tight for some people. So depending on squad structure and everything, but it's worth mm -hmm. definitely worth the punt. And then again, you mentioned Adibayo, yeah. um, affordable price. Anyone's looking to mm -hmm. stack their midfield five and have him as an enabler for the future weeks as well. Not a bad shout. Yeah. Um, and then obviously Doty, we're getting him for his clean uh, for his attacking returns mm -hmm. because nowadays defenders don't keep clean sheets. <laughs> <laughs> All the defense backlines are just one pointers at this point. So yeah. yeah. Um, now Newcastle. Um, what do we do with them? Because their defensive numbers have fallen and it's not looking great at the moment. I've got Trippier and I'm yeah. I'm not really sure if I want to even keep Trippier at this point because I might even sell him for Doughty as well as a possible like make room to try and maybe get either KDB or Salah. Um, mm -hmm. What do you think, Newcastle? Yeah, I mean, Trippier is probably the only good asset right now that you can think of holding on to. Uh, no other defenders... Uh, Makes sense to me. I mean, I know Shar scored a uh, brace, etc., but they, he's not going to score goals every day, right? They are, uh, I think, like 17th or 18th for XG considered in the league uh, this season. They are no more the Newcastle that we used to know last season, especially, right? So, yeah, it's a whole different uh, structure. Even for attackers, like, uh, who do you get? Like, yeah. Wilson gets injured, Isak is injured, Gordon is potentially injured. So, it's just hard to go anywhere else, right? So, yeah, I mean, Newcastle, I still respect them, as a, especially as an uh, attacking force. They're still pretty good. They're, especially at home, their XG numbers are still pretty good. But, yeah, I mean, it really depends, again, like if you want to go to, like, a trend or, like, a more expensive defender, it will be very hard to hold on to Trippier for the longer run, right, just for budget, budget reasons and other things. We also want to get all the big hitters up front as well, right? So it's going to be very difficult. But yeah, I mean, I think Trippier is a decent hold for people who already have him, uh, not a buy for sure. Yep, fair enough. I agree. Um, yeah, I'm as a, I have him for the moment, but kind of had to wait and see with like, if like KDB, Salah, I feel like they are slightly more tempting in terms of returns over Trippier as well. Mm -hmm. So I don't mind making that move to Doherty because of the Sheffield United fixture as well being there. Like a decent right. fixture for Doty, either from a clean sheet or even attacking perspective as well. Um, yeah. So yeah, we'll we'll see. Newcastle, very odd team, right? This season, not the same as before. Um, but let's move into uh, one of your teams as well. So let's talk about Aston Villa versus Chelsea. Uh, now mm -hmm. both of them have an FA Cup replay this week. We are basically recording it the day before the FA Cup replay. 
And if Chelsea win, it would mean Villa have a fixture in game week 29. And vice versa, if Villa win, it would mean Chelsea have a fixture in game week 29. Now, we'll mm-hmm. play both scenarios. So, let's say if Villa were to win, would you think about maybe selling Watkins for even Tony or for some other double gaming player? Uh, even though Watkins still has some good fixtures, or do we keep him till, let's say, game week 28 and then sell him? Yeah, I mean, he is sellable. I mm. think he's sellable, especially if you have uh, don't have all the doublers that you want, right? It could be even for some people, they don't have Haaland yet. Uh, or you don't you want to get a Darwin or you want to get a Tony as you said right like so one of those three basically I, I would sell Watkins for any of those three I think Alan uh, Tony or Darwin um, it's a decision for me as well after the uh, replay uh, uh, I'll decide I'll have to decide I'll most likely have to let go one of Watkins and Saka neither neither is an uh, easy decision Arsenal also have have very good fixtures upcoming, right? So it's not an easy decision there either. But because I don't have an, uh, a Liverpool attacker, I want, at least want to get one, either at least Darwin or Jota, potentially both if I can. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll probably have to sacrifice at least one of what things also. So it really depends on that replay tomorrow, which route I want to go to. And I think it's the same for a lot of other managers as well. Yep, fair enough. <coughs> yeah. When you mentioned Saka as well, right? It's mm-hmm. good fixtures are so good, even with the like yeah. upcoming. But he's got Burnley, he's got Sheffield United. <laughs> that's so yeah. like, how do you sell yeah, this guy? to get rid of him? I know that's yeah. what. So and he's like, if it was two game weeks ago, I would have been all about selling Saka. Now he's scored back to back like almost double digits, and you're like, oh, okay, now I don't know what. Now, to do. Underlying's look looking very good as well, right? Yeah, he's, he, he's playing more central. When all our complaint was like he's very wide right yes. now he's starting to get more central as well yeah it's very difficult for yeah so tough tough one to beat i'm i'm thinking actually about uh, we'll see how the gaming uh, the the FA Cup mm-hmm. replay goes but even potentially keeping watkins and selling solanke mm-hmm. maybe and then getting solanke mm-hmm. back before the double because he has like those two tough fixtures in the middle as sure, well sure. so yeah I, is... I agree with that i think with uh, for people who have both watkins and solanke if you can, I would sell Solanke first mm. and then think about it. Yeah, yep, fair enough. Um, now let's switch it to the other scenario. If mm-hmm. um, Chelsea win, that means they have a blank in 29, then the question comes with regards to Palmer. Now, mm-hmm. I know various managers have different amounts of value stored on him depending on whether you bought him at like 4.9, 5, 5.1, 5.3, different scenarios. Um, mm-hmm. Now, if they don't have that fixture in 29, would you look to sell for another double gimmick player? Yeah, same same scenario, right? Potentially, again, if you want to get to someone like a Jota, right? Mm. I think I'm open to selling Palmer as well. Uh, value invested, of course, but yeah. you will get the value back, right? Uh, Chelsea's fixtures are not the best in the uh, upcoming game weeks. Uh, and if they, of course, blank in 29, that uh, looks even tougher, right? So... I'm okay to let him go and then bring him back when Chelsea's fixtures turn better, when they have doubles, et cetera, later, later in the season. It's okay, I think. I mean, you don't have to necessarily worry about like, hey, I got Palmer for like 4.9 million now. He's like 6 million or whatever. It's okay. It's all right. If you uh, want to get to other better assets who have better fixtures, it's perfectly uh, perfect to sell Palmer as well. And if we, if they have the blank in twenty nine, we're also assuming his price will tend to drop as well yeah, over the next yeah. couple. So you potentially your your like your sell you'll reach your selling value or get close to your selling value by the time you look to buy sure. him back as well. Absolutely. Um. Okay. Let's move into Bournemouth versus Forest. Now, poor result from Solanke this week. Uh. And now there are rumors that he may get a double in game in twenty nine. Like I mentioned before, I've, I already have him, uh, but I might also look to sell him for maybe Darwin and maybe get Solanke back later if he does end up getting that double. You have Solanke or no? No, I don't. I, I never bought <laughs> Solanke, unfortunately, because I held, held on to Haaland uh, all through. Never got Solanke. I have uh, Watkins, Tony and Haaland right now. That's my front three. Uh, but yeah, we kind of already discussed about yeah. it a little bit, right? I mean, uh, my preference would be to keep Watkins if you can over Solanke. 
buy Solan came back when their fixtures turned better in around game 27 or 28. Yeah. In 26, they play Man City. It's a, it's a non-blank, but they, they have a tough, tough fixture. fixture yeah. So uh, I think it's okay to sell uh, Solanke uh, again because you have other doublers, other players with better fixtures. Yeah. It's okay to sell. Yep, fair enough. Okay, let's move to Liverpool. Sorry, Arsenal versus Liverpool. Um, a really strong performance from Arsenal, but it's Liverpool that I want to talk about since they have a good fixture in game 24 against Burnley and then the double followed by a blank. Now, I mentioned earlier as well, there's the rumour uh, Sabosly is out for probably seven to eight weeks. We're not really sure whether they wait for uh, Klopp's uh, press conference. But this could potentially move Trent into midfield, maybe, or it could also they could also put Endo back there. I think because Japan are out from Asia Cup, mm-hmm. he should potentially be be back. Uh, mm-hmm. but let's assume, let's say Trent moves into midfield. This could mean that Connor Bradley becomes a great option as well uh, at four point one. Now, we at the same time aren't really sure if Salah is fit yet or not. So let's start with mm-hmm. Salah. If he is fit. Should we bring him in or do we avoid because he might be east in like how Trent was east in? And because they also have a, like a cup final couple of days after yeah. Luton as well. <clears throat> yeah, pretty hectic fixture. So I definitely don't see Salah playing all the fixtures anyways. It will be tough uh, because we all love Salah so much and we all know what he can do, right? Uh, if we know that he will play both the fixtures or he's at least available to play both the fixtures in game in 25, I'm hoping <laughs> uh, optimistically that he at least isn't available for the first fixture. If he is just available for the second fixtures, I'm perfectly fine to plan without him. Mm. It will become more difficult if we all know that, hey, Salah is like 100% fit, he's coming back uh, for the first fixture in game of 25, and then it will be hard for anyone to not break that team to bring him back in, right? Even if he plays like 60 plus 60 minutes, right? So that's the, that's the difficulty. But it's okay at the same time, I think, if you are already, like, your team structure is such that it's hard to bring Salah back in. Like myself, I already got KDB in, for example, right? If the money is already spent somewhere else, it's I will have to basically break the bank to uh, bring back Salah. I'll have to potentially sell both Watkins and Saka uh, to get him back, right? So you are making sacrifices at least like two, three places, other places in your team. So I don't think it's 100% necessary, but you, you know the mentality of the FPL manager said it, especially if the crowd starts going there, it will be hard to like not think about it completely, avoid it completely. But yeah, I'm, I'm just hoping, as you said, I think he will be uh, eased in a little bit, uh, hopefully not available for the first game in game in 25, even if he plays the second game, I think I'm okay to go without him. And especially because they are blanking in 26 also, right? If you are breaking your team just to get Salah in, then all of a sudden your game of 26 team will look horrible, right? Once they blank. So I think it's okay to go without him. Fair enough. Because you potentially will need to take even a minus eight at times to rank mm-hmm. it. So you kind of have to hope that Salah like gets those minus eight as well points Absolutely. back. Um, yeah. yeah. yeah I, like I've kind of put myself in a situation where it's a bit more harder to mm-hmm. get Salah, because I've got Haaland, mm-hmm. I went and got Jota. I have Trent at the mm-hmm. moment, but I'm still very open mm-hmm. to um, telling Trent. And I think we'll get to Trent as well, because now with Trent and Bradley, Klopp came out and said that Trent can't play a full 90 minutes just yet, which kind of mm-hmm. makes me want to sell him, like to even like fund KDB even, if I'm not going for Salah. Now, if you yeah. get positive news on Salah, uh, where do you stand with both of like Trent and Brad, uh, Trent and Bradley? Would you sell Trent to go to Bradley and afford use that money to like upgrade to either KDB or Salah? Potentially, I mean, I don't trust either of Trent's or Bradley's minutes. To mm-hmm. be honest, uh, I think they will share minutes, right? I don't know if Bradley will start a game or not. His father also died, right? So it yes. must not be easy for him to come back and start playing a game. But I, he will definitely get some minutes out of Trent. Uh, I think they will share minutes, right? So I think it's hard for to go for either of them. If you have him, if you have Trent, it's also hard to sell him, right? We know his potential. We know know his appeal potential. Even if he plays like 60 minutes. Unfortunately, in the last game, he was sub in at like what, 57th minute or yeah. something. So that was unfortunate. But generally speaking, even if he plays like 60, 70 minutes, it's 
all right for him to do enough, right? Uh, so if, again, it's kind of similar to Trippier's situation. If you have him, he's mostly hold, I would say. I'm not probably a buy for most managers right now. I would rather buy like a Van Dijk, you know, who is more secure for X minutes yeah. and so on. Uh, can easily score a goal from a header against a Burnley or a Sheffield and so on. Right? So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, not Sheffield, Luton, I mean. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it's uh, difficult. I think uh, from a priority standpoint, if you absolutely have to buy a Liverpool defender, I would uh, say uh, Van Dijk. Yeah. Mind. Fair enough. I agree. Um, now, so then, with that case, who would be your top three Liverpool players to own? Assuming Salah is not back for the first game of the 25 I would say Darwin, Jota, and potentially Van Dyke or mm-hmm. even Allison for some people. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I agree with it. Uh, let's end it with captaincy. Now, some decent options this week. We have the early kickoff, but we have uh, we have the early kickoff with Manchester City, and also Liverpool have a fixture against Burnley. Who would you be looking to give the armband to, and who else could be options for this week? Yeah, I think I it's pretty straightforward this week. Uh, after some time, right? Uh, because Haaland was out, Salah was out for some time. As long as I get to the leak that Haaland is starting, I have no doubt that I'm putting the armband on Haaland. Even if he plays 60 minutes, I'm okay with that. Um, otherwise, I think if, if we hear any chatter about Haaland not starting, I'm okay to go with a Liverpool attacker uh, or even Richard Lisson for uh, managers who have him. They play against an um, open Brighton uh, who are uh, considering goals for fun. So I'm okay to uh, consider those options as well. Potentially... Slightly, I prefer Darwin over Jota because he's maybe on pens. He didn't miss the pen, but uh, who knows uh, who is going to be on the next pen. Uh, but uh, assuming that he is still on the pens, I slightly pre- prefer Darwin. And also, he was rested, right? So his X minutes are slightly better than Jota's. So I, I uh, prefer Darwin and then Jota and then probably Richardson. Uh, not a bad option. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I'm because I uh I'm trying to chase a mini league as well. So mm-hmm. I'm like, I know the the guys above me will most likely captain Haaland, but yeah. they don't have the others don't have a, like a, a Liverpool attacker just yet. Um, mm-hmm. now they might buy a Liverpool attacker this week, but I'm also thinking maybe it's a decent option to try and captain a Liverpool attacker yeah, just it's to try. A and, perfectly fine option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. gain rank, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see. It's very hard to. Like this week, it was okay because Haaland was kind of like depending on your rank, he was hundred like under hundred year. The yeah. the upcoming week is definitely going to be above hundred year, so it's going to be very yeah. hard to like fight against that. True, true. Um. Okay. Um. Now we have a couple questions as well before we end it. Uh. So I'll ask mm-hmm. a couple. So one is from FPL Paz, um, which is Darwin or Tony, and then pros and cons for both. Yeah, I think we briefly discussed about this, but Tony's pro is basically that he doesn't blank mm. in either 26 or 29. Um, and he's kind of picture proof, right? And he's on penalties for sure. It's pretty much a 90-minute man. So what else do you want in a, a good FPL asset? Right? So there's the pro for Darwin. Uh, sorry, Tony, I mean. And for Darwin, it's basically the immediate fixtures, right? In 24 and 25, they're just far, far better than Tony's. Um so for people who don't have either, I think it's okay to go to uh, Darwin first and then maybe switch to uh, Tony later. Uh, but yeah, if you're thinking more longer term, Tony is probably slightly ahead of Darwin. But yeah, I mean, for immediate uh, EV gain, I think Darwin is far, far better. Yep, I, know, I agree with that. And I guess the one con for Tony is pictures are still not that great. Correct. There are not potential like... Good, yeah. Two pointers in that game as well, but yeah, I yeah. do agree. He with the pens, it kind of slightly elevates his expected uh, points as well. Um, mm-hmm. All right, now the next one is from FPL Blackwolf. Uh, Dan, is it okay to go into double game week twenty five without Liverpool or Manchester City defense? Yeah, I think it's perfectly fine. Uh, no one is keeping clean sheets anyways, right? So you, <laughs> if you want to attack the double game week, you probably want three Man City attackers. Uh, at least two Liverpool attackers and so on, right? So, yeah, if you 
are having to take like too many hits to get to a defender just because they double. Uh, probably not that much worth it. I think it's perfectly okay uh, if your st strategy, if your team otherwise, if your defenders otherwise are okay, I think it's uh, okay to go without them. Yeah, and like City, even though they're really great defensively, do they really keep clean sheets? No, they find a way to concede us <laughs> whenever possible. Every time. Every yeah. Time. Um, so just avoid the disappointment and just don't go again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, now, but uh, I'll add one question to that. If we don't go city defense, which would be like your the top three city players? Would it be Haaland, KDB, and Foden? Or I am biased because I right now have those three: oh, okay, uh, <laughs> Haaland, KDB, and Foden. I think yes. Uh, KDB, I, I I bought him in just last week, yeah. and I was telling others as well. I wasn't too happy about my decision. I kind of uh, took the decision uh, in a whim, but uh, for his price. He's probably not worth uh, yeah. that much, right? For a 10 point six million. But again, if Salah is not back, who do you really buy with that money also? Right? So it's uh is that conundrum, but uh, he's right now he's pretty high EO as well. That's seventy percent plus EO. I don't know how he go, got there so quick, so fast, people are so engaged. So uh -huh. yeah, I think I would say those three potentially. Yeah, he's gone from ten point three to ten point eight in within like a couple of weeks. Yeah. It's, it's, just and it's not like that you can go for like a Doku or Grealish either. Yes, right? that's the thing. There is no, there is a every chance that they don't uh, get enough minutes. So, yeah, I would say those three. Yeah, <clears throat> I went for Bernardo and I was like, yeah, no, mm -hmm. not working. And I, I started Bernardo this week and benched Karnacho for his 16 pointer. So, it's been a tough week. So, I was like, okay, yeah. um, I've kind of I've sold Bernardo now. I hit up the double because I was like, I went and sold Bernardo, got Jota in before his price rise. Mm -hmm. now, with the potential move to like, free up that city spot to try and get KDB. The thing with yeah. KDB is if he continues to like hit like this five, six pointer, it's not worth it. But we very yeah. well know he's capable of like that <laughs> 20 pointer. He's okay. got it in him. Yeah. So I guess you're buying a lottery ticket, I guess, in one way, <laughs> hoping to get lucky. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So that's basically it. Uh, thank you for your time today. Do you have anything to plug? No, just again, uh, if you don't already follow FPL Under the Radar, as Ryan mentioned before, we are not making videos anymore, but we are still creating content on X or, or Twitter. So yeah, just uh, follow us on Twitter for more content. Indeed. Uh, and um, follow FPL Khan as well. His Twitter handle is on the video. And if you're listening to this on Spotify, uh, it's FPL underscore Kante and obviously FPL, uh, Radar FPL uh, for FPL Under the Radar as well. Uh, but yeah, that's it. You can also find me, Football Chatbox, on YouTube where I do weekly videos and deadline streams. And we did a special video this week uh, about how to win your mini league. So you can find that on Football Chatbox as well. Um, that's it for this week's Scout the Game Week. I'll be, uh, I'll be back after Game Week 24 and looking ahead to double Game Week 25. Green Aerosol. <laughs>